approach to facilitate the rapid identification of patients at a high risk for acute MI suggests that utilizing high baseline, high sensitivity cardiac troponin concentrations at presentation have a high positive predictive value for identifying those at high risk for acute MI. And this is largely based on European studies reporting that the presence of these very high concentrations is associated with a higher probability for acute MI at presentation. So for high sensitivity cardiac troponin T specifically, ESC guidelines recommend using a baseline threshold of 52 nanograms per liter, both in the 0-1 hour and 0-2 hour rapid roll-in algorithms. So these European derivation studies that were cited in ESC guidelines were largely based on selected patients presenting with chest pain, which really limits their generalizability to the U.S. practice, uh, where we often obtain troponin measurements in a much more heterogeneous and diverse population. So in recognizing this heterogeneity, some have suggested using a higher baseline threshold of 100 nanograms per liter in U.S. patients, although there are no current U.S. data and studies comparing these thresholds formally. Hi, my name is Jonathan Knotts, and I'm currently a cardiology fellow at Mayo Clinic, and it's my pleasure to discuss today our study entitled High Baseline High Sensitivity Cardiac Troponin T Concentrations and Risk of Index Acute Myocardial Infarction. Our study was recently accepted at Mayo Clinic Proceedings and is planned to be published in the September 2024 issue. So the aim of our study was to evaluate the positive predictive value of these baseline thresholds of 52 and 100 nanograms per liter for ruling in index acute myocardial infarction within U.S. patients within the Mayo Clinic system. We also wanted to evaluate the distribution of these concentrations across all the different Mayo Clinic sites. And these sites included Mayo Clinic Rochester, Arizona, Florida, as well as the Mayo Clinic Health System sites. And so our study consisted of two separate cohorts. The first cohort was the CV Datamark cohort, and this consisted of about 143,000 unselected patients across the different Mayo Clinic sites in whom at least one high sensitivity cardiac troponin T was obtained within 12 hours of presentation. It's important to note that these diagnoses were based solely on ICD-10 codes in this cohort as well. So our second cohort consisted of uh, 2,000 patients across the Mayo Clinic Health System, and all the diagnoses uh, in this cohort were adjudicated events for both uh, type 1 and type 2 MI, as well as acute MI as well. So we evaluated uh, the positive predictive value for acute MI in both cohorts, which was a combination of type 1 and type 2 MI, and we also evaluated these as separate diagnoses as well using these two different baseline thresholds. So there were several important findings from our study, uh, the first of which was that the ESC recommended threshold of 52 nanograms per liter really provided suboptimal performance for identifying those at high risk for acute MI, both in all comers with a positive predictive value of about 41%, as well as in those presenting with chest pain with a positive predictive value of about 66%. The second finding was that when using a higher threshold of 100 nanograms per liter, this also resulted in suboptimal performance in all comers, but it significantly improved uh, when used in selected patients with chest pain with a positive predictive value of about 77%. It's important to note that these findings were driven predominantly by those with type 1 MI events, which is an important thing to note as the rapid, identifi uh, rapid identification of these patients in particular is very important so that we can quickly implement guideline-directed evaluations and therapies in these patients to hopefully improve their outcomes. And lastly, we found that the distribution of these baseline thresholds or these baseline concentrations was really similar across all the different Mayo Clinic sites. And this suggests that the positive predictive values that we saw in both the unselected and selected patients at these sites may be generalizable to the broader U.S. population as well. And so how do our data compare to those to the uh, European derivation studies that are cited in the ESC guidelines that I mentioned earlier? So what we saw is that uh, the performance for both of these thresholds was lower than uh, the majority of those studies that are cited in the guidelines uh, for ESC guidelines. And I think there's a variety of reasons for this, uh, but I think likely the, the predominant reason for this discrepancy is likely a difference in population, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so these European cohorts were really restricted to those presenting with true ACS symptoms, namely chest pain, whereas the clinical practice in the U.S. is to really obtain these troponin measurements in a much more diverse population, which will inherently lead to a lower pretest probability for acute MI and will therefore lead to a lower uh, positive predictive value for acute MI as well. So it's likely in some of these U.S. patients, we're seeing a, a, large, a larger majority of patients with uh, non-escapement myocardial injury, and this could be due to patients being elderly, critically ill, or even those presenting with renal failure as well. 
And so how do our data uh, really translate into our own clinical practice here in the US? So I think the, the largest takeaway from our study is that when utilizing this higher baseline threshold of 100 nanograms per liter, particularly in those selected patients with chest pain, we can more confidently identify those who are truly at high risk for acute MI and with that, more confidently implement those guideline-directed evaluations and therapies in these patients with the goal of improving their short and long-term outcomes. Although we can also say from the data in our study that in unselected patients, uh, we really can't rely on sole use of these elevated baseline thresholds to confidently rule in acute MI in these patients. And really, we should be using uh, these baseline thresholds in conjunction with the patient's presenting symptoms, the ECG data, and I think most importantly, utilizing this with serial blood sampling with repeat uh, troponin testing at two and six hours to truly rule in acute myocardial injury in conjunction with evidence of ischemia. And so the real reason for this is that we want to avoid unnecessary invasive procedures in these patients, and we also want to avoid uh, an unnecessary increase in healthcare costs as well. And so at Mayo Clinic specifically, we've actually taken some of these data from these European studies and actually implemented this into our own clinical practice. And so we have a, a Mayo Clinic uh, rule and algorithm for acute myocardial infarction that's actually displayed in the Ask Mayo Expert pathway. And I encourage you to look at that if you haven't already and if you have access. And what we, the way we've formulated this algorithm is we've actually utilized that higher threshold of 100 nanograms per liter based on those prior data that I mentioned. And in there, we state that if patients meet or exceed this threshold, then these patients certainly are at elevated risk for acute myocardial infarction. Um, although we do still recommend serial sampling at two and six hours in these patients to really confirm that there's true acute myocardial injury in conjunction with myocardial ischemia, so that they truly do meet criteria for acute myocardial infarction and therefore uh, warrant all the guideline-directed pathways that I mentioned. And so how do we move forward here? So I think what we truly need are large multi-center US studies with adjudicated events to prospectively evaluate these thresholds so that we can better optimize our own clinical practice uh, for identifying those who are at high risk for acute myocardial infarction. And so with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the study. And I encourage you to reach out to myself or any of the other co-authors if you have questions, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com Mayo Proceedings, or journal updates on Facebook, www.facebook.com Mayo Clinic Proceedings. You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mayo Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.